Uh, welcome to Marketing WTF, Marketing with Tran and Fabris. This is episode seven. Uh, today, we got a, a really kind of poignant show where we're talking about the latest trends that came out. There's a big Zoom update this week that we're going to kick off stuff, uh, kick off the episode with. And then we're going to talk about uh, after the sale, short form or using short form video after the sale. So that means um, to one, to train your customers to give them a, a great kind of unboxing experience, even when you're running, you know, a online business or a marketing agency uh, for all of your clients, it works as well. And then we're going to kind of talk how you can use short form video strategically to increase retention rate for clients, whether they purchase off you, not just once, you know, you develop a loyal following of people who purchase off you for years to come, but we're putting a face to the brand and that's what short form video really does. Uh, so Tom, yeah, heading into it, one of my favorite things that, uh, or one of the, the awesome things that I saw this week with the Zoom updates was a extension that's called read.ai. So I just used this this morning uh, while talking to somebody. Uh, he's given me the okay to go through this with you. Uh, essentially what this is, is it records the entire conversation. It just is a third seat in the, in the conversation. But if you can see here, as we went through, it basically just breaks down everything that happened and it's a sales tool. So we can see here, if we go to like the recap section, what is doing is one, it gives us like a summary of everything we talked about, the chapters, topics. This is all similar to stuff I saw in Zoom before, but over here, um, what you can look at, maybe I can get a little more space here. Nope. Whatever happened right there. Right-hand side. Use that. Look at the arrow on the right-hand side. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Yeah, it's new here. Essentially, what it's doing is it's rating uh, or ranking how engaged the person on the other end of the call is while I'm talking. It gives me a score, like how, how engaged I am compared to other people on Zoom calls. And then it's also ranking the participant, uh, the sentiment of what was said, like the attitude we're using. And when it's checking the attitude, the attitude is actually based on it's looking at that other person's face. If this is a sales call, what it's doing is it's looking at their face and afterwards it's letting me know how engaged they were. So like, think about how powerful that is as a sales tool. Also it's ranking basically the style that I'm, you know, the tone that I'm speaking in, how engaged I am, how energetic I am. Uh, also if I have any bias, so like, am I being positive? Am I being negative with the tone? Um, you know, it's also checking other things like camera on, camera off. If you get in a sales call and the person turns their camera off, there's basically like no way you're going to sell them, right? Uh, and then it also breaks it down to just different highlights. So like, for example, here, when I'm talking about certain key points, it's ranking or it's rating how engaged they were, right? So for some of these, you know, I said, at one point he was having an issue with his website. He couldn't do what he needed it to do. And it's looking at his face. You can see it just goes down. It's this is where his frustrations were. Now, if I'm talking to you about your business and I'm, you know, just talking about, yeah, so it's great. I know you're great at getting leads, but you know, are you good at making sales? And then all of a sudden your face changes and it's built in there. That's huge. Um, the, the gentleman that I was speaking to before is head of a sales department with about 80 people in it. And basically when we saw that breakdown, like, you know, the effectiveness that this is going to have when you're selling, you know, sorry, when you're training new sales representatives is absolutely crazy. You know, you can see, you know, it ranks how much time I spend talking versus how much time you spend talking. Wow. You know, like for a sales call, that's huge. You know, you want to know what your problem is in your sales call? you do all the talking or you speak monotone or like, dude, and it's big data. What it has the ability to do is basically then group together all of the conversations that I've had. And it'll be able to give me a, a report that summarizes all of that. You know, I would expect there's going to be certain 
things like, you know, Kevin's great at a meeting at 9 a.m. He's terrible at a meeting at 7.30 p.m. based on these things. You know, like it lets you stack the deck in front of you. It lets you know which scripts are working, which topics work. I've only done this once, but holy cow, the the possibilities are absolutely endless. I can see that only that space only growing too. I mean, I know there's some earlier AI companies to the market that do that. And just with the growth in uh, integrating, um, I think it's it's so crazy because what came to mind for me with that is um, something I had picked up from, you know, one of our other coaches in terms of how they use that for their uh, virtual sales calls as well. Um, same key points, right? Uh, making sure you have a relationship, you're asking most of the questions, but your prospect or potential customer is the one that's doing most of the answering, right? Because you need to understand they need to be heard, right? Um, and then on top of that, being able to have your proven sales scripts there and available for your team uh, whenever that objection does come up in the conversation, right? So it's like, if you think about that, what came to mind from just that that background context is, uh, have you seen the NVIDIA eye contact tool? It's an, it's an AI. It's a software that allows you to basically, no matter where you're looking, it, it, it makes your eyes looking at the camera. I was, I'm, I'm curious to see if, and because I haven't played with this yet, right? I'm curious to see if that that software from NVIDIA, you could plug into Zoom and it's almost like you can actually have a newer salesperson kind of like look over at the script if they needed to, but then have their eyes still making contact with that prospect as a, that would be wild, right? But honestly, when I looked at this, the natural conclusion for me is what they're actually doing is they're using all this bio recognition face technology mm -hmm. within two, three years, it's going to be AI sales representatives. That's because they're they're just now have the ability to do it at mass with millions of sales reps a day, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that seems like the logical conclusion. Maybe I'm being short sighted and I'm only seeing the first answer. I don't know two, three folds after that. But in terms of like immediate impact, what's going to happen? It lets it emailed me a report directly after. It highlighted the you know two three main issues that that made him frustrated, and then the two or three main points that made him happy. It gave me a recap of the meeting as well as action items. So, yeah, again, it's not necessarily breaking. You know, like a lot of programs do similar parts, but I was still very very shocked. And when I showed it to him afterwards, he was like his mind went off because he's got a trail in sixty to hundred sales reps. That's fascinating. Dude, that's it's it's so crazy. Mm. So, do you have anything uh, that kind of jumped out at you this week, or do you want to hop right into our main topic? Yeah, I think um, just the one thing that kind of came up this week was how the nuances between actually utilizing um, OpenAI, right, and its API as opposed to using ChatGPT. Uh, I was on a, a, a webinar yesterday, um, and they were talking about those nuances. So. The interesting thing about it is some of the objections, this was a sales webinar, right? And I was on the uh, the side being sold and I, and I knew it, but then there was, so, there was a lot of nuances to be able to unpack. One, the way in which the person that was actually pitching, right, was delivering. So it was more of like a coaching moment, me taking copious notes, knowing that my credit card was already out and ready to kind of give the darn man money, right? But then also understanding like how they're able to utilize AI and build it on top of their all already proven system and business, right? And that's what you can't really replicate, if you will, right? Some of the sales objections were, well, I already have this software tool. Why why do I have to pay for your recurring uh, model and your and effectively like your white labeled version of the software when I already have that and I have open AI, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the team, the, the sales team was like, well, that it's not that simple. You don't just plug and play. The nuances, the nuances are the IP that we've been uh, we've developed over the past decade of doing this in our business, right? Mm -hmm. And when you plug that in, right now, the 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 brain of the machine understands your systems, your processes, so that the outputs are aligned with what used to normally take you a decade of experience to basically learn how to do, right? And then also be able to implement that at a manual level. So you have the skill set of the actual person that understands the that understands what they're doing and then being able to process each piece of that framework to put that system together. And it's an entire marketing stack for like say a new business or um, for an existing business, it, all from, for instance, um, the same framework, right? So the difference is the nuance of the actual uh, niche or industry in itself. And it outputs something that would normally take um, hours, if not multiple days, 
right? Now it's condensed it, the timeframes into actual minutes. And that to me was fascinating because the TLDR for me is you and I have been in this business for you know close to a decade. So we're going on almost two decades combined, right? So how are we able to, and I'm envisioning like the matrix, right? Up, just mm. upload, just plug me in, upload the info. Mm. That's kind of what I saw in terms of the aha moment as I was listening to uh, that, that webinar yesterday. It's like, you have your framework, plug AI into it, have it understand what you want it to do. Now these newer inputs, say from our clients, right? From our prospects, we're able to then have those inputs go in instead of to us, to our machine, where AI can drive that and get the outputs that are really typically closer to us, or at least gets us to that at least destination version one a lot faster. Yeah, it gets to the refinement step. Uh, you know, I know I say this every week, but like, you know, AI is artificially intelligent. It is not intelligent. If mm -hmm. you just try that day one, you know, as soon as I feel like I have my my handle on how I'm using certain things, it'll just, you know, 25 right answers in a row and then boom, 40 wrong answers in a row. Like the the thing that drives me crazy is like just the repetitiveness and the the obvious fake language that comes out of it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, it it can it's like steroids for your brain. It's steroids for your process. It's steroids for basically everything. But just like real steroids, you still got to do the work. You know, you can't just you can't just do steroids and get jacked. You still got to work out. You still got to go hit a thousand home runs. All that same kind of thing, right? So. Just because intelligence is in the name doesn't mean it's actually intelligent, but man, what an absolute tool. That sounds like I made fun of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, with that, let's hop into today's main topic. And it's, um, I came across this article through HubSpot. I use a lot of HubSpot uh, with my clients. Yep. Uh, and it's just in their like marketing trends for June of 2023. Uh, this kind of stood out to me. So like number one, um, the marketing channels that people are really using are still traditional ones, you know, like their short form video, social media, uh, influencer marketing, but 90% of the marketers, you know, everybody knows short form video is where it's at. That's what's popping right now. Short form video is basically done in a vertical uh, orientation, anything that's like a minute or less. Uh, this is kind of a new thing new stat though 56 percent of the marketers are planning to put more into tiktok i've done that a lot over the last six months i have not found the same delivery rates from tiktok as i have from other platforms mm -hmm. you know for me in terms of like getting stuff delivered google ads meta tiktok right like it's you know it's the intention and maybe the the audience age you know there, there's a bunch of different things that can go into that but, you know, to kind of continue with what this is saying, people know what's working and they're going to kind of stick with what's working best. You know, people who do SEO are going to stick with it, but then they're also going to add in video as well. And a newer, a newer method of marketing that's coming up is 25% of marketers who have never used interviews as part of a selling tool uh, are going to do that. And 100%, that's just the, you know, in my opinion, that's based on the no like trust that we talk about every time. Mm -hmm. uh, just because like, I can learn something about Tom Tran in your 30 second videos. I watch two or three of those, but then all of a sudden I find a podcast. Oh, okay. Now I can really find out what this guy is about, you know, ahead of our meeting or whatever. Right. So I think that's a, an, an interesting fold right there, Yeah. but just I, to kind of, Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. So just to kind of take that and, and take it to the next logical step, you know, typically when people are using short form video, at, at least when, when we are, we're thinking about it in terms of lead generation, um, customer outreach. But now I think really what's important to consider is that short form video can just be such an amazing tool for people who already are your customers. So the second that they opt in, you can still use short form video to make sure they get to your sales call. You can still use short form video immediately after they buy for your onboarding, uh, for strategic touch points throughout the life of whatever it is that you're selling, you know, maybe you have a three month course, you know, using it inside there at the right time is just a, a super powerful tool to sell somebody a second product because there's nobody more likely to buy than somebody who already purchased and had a good experience. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think just in the initial um, viewing of that infographic from HubSpot, 
Um, what stood out to me the most was that in those three categories, meaning top marketing channels, effective marketing strategies, and what's new in marketing, it all references uh, video in some form, right? So if you think about it from that standpoint, outside of the arguments and the um, consistent growth of short form video across multiple channels, um, think about, so one thing that stood out, right, um, is in the second section, effective marketing strategies, right? What HubSpot's infographic calls out is video is the most popular and effective media format for the fourth year in a row, fourth year in a row. So if you think about where we were four years ago, right? Um, it was during, right, pre-pandemic, but rolling right into the pandemic. And just the rise of the creator economy and the rise of having to uh, basically be able to, the only way you could meet face-to-face -face was through uh, virtually, right? So if you think about that, um, it's become our cliche term, new normal, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it from that standpoint, and then you look at it in terms of your business, has your business changed? or the way in which you say uh, make contact with customers or that buying journey changed at all because of what's happened. And now we're post, you know, the, the, the pandemic. And in thinking about that, I would encourage you to uh, think about something that came from uh, a concept that came from, for me anyways, uh, the E-Myth Revisited, right? How can you systematically repeat the same thing, the same outcome over and over again? So if you look at your customer journey, how many ways can you not only streamline that that business and that process, but then also be able to incorporate video into that process. So then that journey for your customer is actually more intimate, if you will, right? Because of course you're gonna want it, you would want to give everyone the white glove, red carpet treatment. But how effectively can you do that? Especially if you're in a lower margin, high volume type of a business. You can't personally, but you can still, right, instill that type of experience by what? Using video. You don't have to be on TikTok aggressively or be doing YouTube shorts or be doing Instagram reels every single day thinking that that's the only way to grow your business. But, right, if your business is already dialed in, what ways can you use one video but have that same video show up for every single customer of yours at the same place in the process every single time to make that experience more intimate, more special for them is something I challenge you guys to, to consider, right? Yeah. I like how you use the word uh, intimate right there. Uh, I, I was kind of sitting on this and saying that it just provides a level of authenticity, mm -hmm. um, especially like in today's world where like people don't know if if a blog post is written by a person, if it's written by chat GTP, like the human element is so much more, so much, yeah, so much more important these days. And especially if you've been on a sales call with them, um, you know, that you do have a rapport and then you show up in just a short form video is clearly you, you're talking the same stuff that you just said in the video. Nobody's mad at that. They like it because it's more helpful and it is still FaceTime, even though it's automated, they're completely okay with it. Versus like when you send an onboarding package that has like 10 pages of documents that they have to read. Yeah. Who enjoys right. receiving that in the mail? Nobody. Or in the email? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, nobody at all. And in the past, I've tried things like where, like say we'd space out the email. So something that would have been 10 pages in a document, we'll send them two pages. A couple hours later, we send them another two pages, a couple hours later so that they can digest it. But to just get on that same thing, here's your 10 page document with a video at the beginning. That's like, Hey Tom, this is the exciting part. This is where the action starts, but also this is where a little, where you're going to have to do a little bit of work, but trust me, it's going to be worth it for you. So if you take your time and you fill in all of these things that we need, that's what we're going to need to be able to deliver for you. So, you know, it's just has a nice tone. It seems authentic. It is authentic. It is. But like you said, if, if I'm selling something that costs $200, yeah, I can't give everybody the red carpet treatment because the red carpet treatment would literally take me three, four days to do. Right. Right. You, you literally do not have time for that. But people appreciate it where you have a thought out system. They actually appreciate the fact that they are getting the videos because it just shows, oh, you've thought through the process. You've done this before. It shows your expertise mm -hmm. and it also makes that connection. It's just more trust, more trust, more trust. Of course, they're going to be over delivered. Look at what they're doing here. And then all of a sudden, all your resources show up that much faster. So with that being said, um, if somebody has opted in, what is the first video or piece of video that you would typically send somebody? Yeah. So it, whatever the opt-in is, confirm that they're in the right place, right? So something just even from like, say, our time in uh, 
any type of direct response type of uh, uh, playbook, but let's say specifically in Meta, if you're running any say ads on Facebook or on Instagram, and your um, you know your conversion right is actually a landing page type of a conversion where someone's opting in, make sure that your the messaging right that person is seeing is congruent from the time that they see the ad once they click and then land onto that destination, whether it be a landing page or whatever that is right. So the reason why I say it that way is because the opt in is important. So. If, Make sure that you are reaffirming to that person that opted in that, yes, you are in the right place, right? You wanted a coupon for a pizza. Congrats. Here is your coupon for a pizza or whatever that is. Just acknowledge the step that they made on that the, the, the on that step, right? That they just basically are landing on now, right? Hey, your step one was congrats. Like, you know, here is opt in for a coupon for a pizza, Right. Once they opt in, whether it's email address or phone number, in our case, I would always recommend both if I could mandatorily require that. Right. Um, once you confirm on that next step is, hey, success. Congratulations. Thank you for opting in to the coupon for the pizza. Right. And then what happens after that? Right. It's either download it below or the coupon is going to be delivered where, how. Right. Uh, via your email and or your phone should you have requested it one of both ways. And the reason why we suggest multi-channel is because you're always there with them every single way, like every single point along the way, because you want to make sure that you are a la story brand, the guide in their cust in the hero's journey. The hero has said the hero saw a an offer. They wanted to acquire that offer because they wanted to have pizza for the night for And I'm just, you know, overly embellishing mm -hmm. this, but it's like, hey, there's dinner for the family and it's a cheaper it's a cheaper uh, price than we'd normally have. We love going to this place. You want to make sure you're there along every single step of that journey. One, it creates a higher level of intimacy, but two, it's just to reaffirm that they took that that they are in the right place and they're taking that right that right step, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also like that process of uh, a confused mind never buys, right? Yeah. This is what happens next. For that same reason, like uh, what we often do is we put a video on the thank you page, especially in direct response, right? In direct response, typically I'm going to have to follow up with the client as opposed to them, you know, booking a time on the calendar themselves. And if I have to follow up myself, what I say is essentially, you know, I'm framing it and I'm and I'm subtly training them inside the the automation. So, hey, guys that are, you know, hey, thanks for opting in. Just so you know, blah, 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 blah. I maybe re restate the offer and then say the next thing that you have to do is go down below, book a time on my calendar. You know, depending on what the offer is, if it's like a, if you have a high no show rate, that's a great time to say, I just want to be honest with you. We're really busy. So if you do not, if you pick a time and you no show, you're going to be moved to the back of the line and maybe two, three weeks before you can get another call. No offense, but you know, we, we have to, we value our time and we, we value your time. I hope you value our time. Uh, and basically, you just kind of frame it for them so they're ready. After that, you know, you have your sales call or your delivery call, whatever. Uh, what I like to do after a thank you page video is basically directly after a purchase, send out an email as well. Because like something that happens a lot is people will get uh, buyer's remorse, you know? So Obviously, if I'm on a marketing call with Tom Tran and he's talking about short form video, of course I'm in. He's showing me all these awesome examples. Everything's going well. Everything's going well. But then I have to go into the next room and I explain it to my wife. I'm like, guess what I just bought? You know, and now all of a sudden it it's, comes down to my ability to re-explain what you just sold me. And it made a lot of sense when you did it. But when I turn around, I'm just like, yeah, you know, videos. And, and maybe my wife would turn around with like, well, you have a phone. Why don't you just make your own videos? Maybe you don't need a professional studio setup. Maybe you don't need 30 videos. You could just do it yourself. So it, I lose the ability to explain the offer in an educated way and an authoritative way. So what I like doing is a post sale. We send out a, an email that has a video as well as testimonials from other people who bought, right? I think this is a super important mm. step wow. because that that remorse that just kind of, you know, people aren't sure. People love buying. They hate being sold. And no matter what, you're going to hang up the phone, no matter what it is you bought. Like, I just bought something for 5,000 bucks. Well, what did I buy? Uh, if they have, if they don't have a definitive answer and they don't have proof of something, because a lot of times in a service industry, there is no proof till after you've done it. Right. 
right? So right. basically by showing these are people who've already bought this, they had great experiences. A video of me saying, okay, this is what's going to happen next. Um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. Like essentially it works as an onboarding email, but I feel like that has done wonders in certain funnels that we have of just making sure that people stay on board and they're still interested. And if they do have to explain it to their partner or something, it comes off in the way that we would say it versus the way that they would say it. Yeah, I agree. I love that because it's reinforcing what they, the, the action that they just took. Right. Because you weaved in a lot of sales psychology there, you know, especially post purchase, because the adrenaline, the endorphins have already hit for you. But mm. you want you went through that entire cycle. But then the person that you're going home to or you're having a conversation with that just saw this charge being taken out of a credit card out of your bank account is has a different type of reaction than you do. Right. So like in a, in a, in a very like, say, uh, brief way, it's like you want to make sure that. Um, you're acknowledging what that person did, where they are now, what's the next step. And then once they made that step, reinforce that action with more positivity, right? It's a glorified thank you. And why? Don't just take my word for it. Here are all these other people that experience what you're about to experience as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like um, for our Japanese websites, uh, we did our uh, beta testing round last month. And one of the things that kind of just struck out or, you know, stood out to us was essentially it's really easy for me to sell another foreigner that lives in Japan, right? Because I understand their experience. Like, hey, welcome to illiteracy. Hey, you can't understand anything. All that kind of stuff. They get it. It's funny. I can I can present it that way. But then they got to turn around and explain to their wife or business manager, usually their wife, like, hey, I just bought us a new website from this guy who can't speak Japanese properly, who doesn't know how to write it, who doesn't actually even live here, you know, like where, of course, like that's the wrong audience, but you need a way to really present it to them. And then also in that video, for example, say like, hey, thanks for signing up. The next step that we have to do is get on a call with the two of us and my wife, you know, in Borat voice. You know, like it, it's just the next kind of process to put all those fears at ease because you have to be, you know, even though the purchase might be made by one person, very few people are are kind of pillars when it comes to their own financial decisions. Yeah. And going back to just like, say, rules of sales, right? Make sure that the person that you're selling, every single decision maker is on that, say, sales call with you. But mm -hmm. in actuality, oftentimes how it plays out is the spouse in that relationship may not be attached to the business directly, but that's an indirect conversation that oftentimes happens at the dinner table or in the bedroom after the fact, right? So what can you do to help make sure you're reinforcing the person that you just sold into your goods or services or products, right? Has that, has enough ammunition to be like, yeah, I did make the right purchase. Look at all these other people that said the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. so help them help you. Exactly. And it's unrealistic for them to maybe have everybody with them at every step of the way. Right. Like the, the amount of times I've just Googled something and five minutes later, I found myself on a webinar and then 20 minutes later, I got my credit card out. It makes sense. It solves the problem that I was having at that time. But at the same time, to then have to turn around to my partner or my wife or, you know, whoever and explain, I absolutely needed this because of blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it's it, it just it is what it is. So to have all of your, you know, your options. Eyes dotted and your T's crossed just by having like a, a great video in your follow up automation um, across the board has been transformational in some of our funnels. Yeah. Um, and then that's immediately post purchase, right? Now, depending on what it is that somebody buys off you, um, whether it's like, say, digital marketing services on a monthly retainer, whether it's uh, SaaS, whether it's, you know, something for a client. The second after they've purchased their initial thing, your job is to wow them, obviously, to make them have a great experience, to give them the transformation that they're looking for. But also the second that begins, you're also really selling them their second product. You know, like if it's digital marketing, the second month one starts, you're already selling them month two. The whole experience is getting engaged the entire time, right? They're judging you on every interaction from start to finish. And like some of it, you got over 10, 20 clients, like it's impossible to do that. So to just have it set up where it's, you know, videos that are timed properly to where people are, 
in the in their experience, it can actually be transformational for your business. Uh, one of those things that I really like doing is after somebody's completed the onboarding, and you know they've gotten their first bit of success. You know, if it's marketing, if they've made their first high ticket sale, if it's um, a product right after delivery, you give them 24 hours and then send them like a review automation, right? So you set it up as an automation with just a, you know, a short form video that's basically asking people like, hey, uh, it was super awesome to have you on board. I think that, you know, we're off to a great success. If you have loved your experience with us, it would really help us out if you tell other people about your experience with us. Uh, so, you know, and then this is great through Go High Level or HubSpot or a lot of CRMs will do this. You know, you can essentially give them like an email that lets them decide what level of, of satisfaction they have. So essentially the first, that video is saying like, hey, if you had a great experience, let us know. If they give you like a, a big smile or a hundred percent icon, well then follow that up with an automation that sends them to like an automatic uh, Google review or Facebook review. If it's something that's lower, the video is still getting you that no like trust where you can then actually, now I have to pick up the phone and call you because you didn't have a great experience. So what can I do to turn that around? This is huge in retention, obviously. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think uh, in addition to that too, what it allows you to do, oftentimes people, I feel like at a very, you know, stereotypical level will think that automation takes away from personality or from a personal like or, or authentic experience, right? I want to be more personal with my clients, with my customers, because that's why they're here. Because I'm a small mom and pop shop, and this is the way I do things. And and it's like they could buy whatever goods or services from anywhere, but they buy from me because of our relationship. Understood. Point taken, right? So really, what I, I, the point I want to make is like automation shouldn't take away from that. It should actually allow you to be more intimate and more present with your customers and your clients. Why? Because all of the things that you need to do from like, say, a checklist perspective, from your process, from the time they learn about your business to the time that they're um, sold and they've experienced what you have to offer, um, that should be a process that can be done in a streamlined way. Automation allows and helps you to make ensure that all of that happens, regardless of if you're physically having to do that or not, right? If that step is uh, needs to be taken, is there a way for you to create a system that in to where that stuff happens so then you can really focus on everything else that you can make, uh, that you can do to make that customer experience more authentic, more personable, right? Yeah, Think and, about and also, that yeah, yeah. And also like a strong automation shows people that you not only value your own time, you value, you value their time. Right. You know, a phone call means you got to give me half an hour on Wednesday at 2 p.m. But you know what? Your business might be exploding at this time. You might be in a sales call. You might have 50 other things. You know, your kids have figure skating, whatever the heck it is you might have something to do there. If I can convey the same information in a two minute video that you can check, you know, 6 a.m. tomorrow, 2 p.m. the next day on Saturday, all of that stuff. Like, why would I waste your time with a half an hour? Yeah, we want that face to face. We want all of that stuff. But ultimately what we want is a transformation, right? And we want right. to, you know, if somebody is hiring, say a marketing agency, they're doing it because they're either saying, I don't have the skill or I don't have the time. Usually it's a combination of both. Yeah. So why would I say somebody who's literally told me I don't have the time to do this? Why would I be like, hey, we got to get on the phone, you know, three times a week. We got to have all this stuff. We have to have these long drawn out meetings. Yeah. For some things we need that, you know, for like campaign ideas, for business growth ideas. Yeah. We need to talk that through. But for like, hey, send me your Facebook pixel. Like, what, what are we doing here? That stuff's boring. Nobody wants to do it. You can right. do it on your own time. Value their time and they're going to value your efforts. Yeah. And I mean, even to echo that too, right? Um, what it should, in terms of utilizing video, right? Another place where you can utilize video for just more of an integrated and a higher level experience is through education and support, right? Mm -hmm. If someone, for instance, like if that was an issue that came up and I was say your client, Kevin, and it was for me because I work late and my business um, hours are late, right? Maybe it's midnight. And I don't know how to get my Facebook pixel. I'm not going to call you. You shouldn't, and, right? And, and if if I was accustomed to calling you, do you want to take a call at, mid, at midnight around um, where can I find, what is a Facebook pixel? Where can I find it? No, you don't, right? You want to be able to set up places and systems to where as that your client is going through that checklist, if they get stuck, provide them all the resources possible, right? For them to be able to find the answer while they're there. 
because then it allows them to continue down that journey and get the outcome that they want, as opposed to getting stuck there and then say, okay, well, I know I can't call them now. I don't know where to find it. Um, it, it just provides for a bad experience because then where are they going to go look for the answer, right? The reason why you're working with them is because you were the solution to their problem, right? So make it easier on them and think about that and then easier on yourself because you're not going to want to take that call at midnight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what we're doing with our Japanese sites. We, we've basically given everybody like a, you know, like a built-in course, essentially, mm -hmm. where this is how to hook up your training or this is how to hook up your tracking. This is how to get your Google ads. This is how to set up, you know, this is how to edit your go high level account. This is how to add a new picture. Oh, the picture doesn't look good. This is why. This is how to take a good picture. You know, like, again, this is stuff. Typically, a business owner is busy. You know, like if you find a business owner who's not busy, they're broke or they're, or they're a billionaire, you know, like right. the there's others. no middle ground, right? They're either, they've done it so well that they don't have to do it anymore or yeah, they're not even trying and, and you will not be able to find them. So if 99% of business owners are in the middle where they have just a super packed schedule and they're doing it basically by, you know, force of will. Like if you think about what it is, like a business owner not only is trying to live their own dream, they've convinced 10 other people to help me, you know, yep. like, hey, help me live my dream. To do that, I'm going to I'm going to compensate you. Hopefully I'm going to compensate you well and I'm going to give you tools so that you can live your own dream. But like there's buy in, you know, you have to be on board. Yeah. And I think, you know, just on top of that, too, uh, in terms of video. Right. Um one other thing that uh, I want to dispel, too, is like when you hear the word short form video nowadays, um, it isn't always uh, pertain to vertical video or a TikTok or a Instagram reel or a YouTube short. They're all the same thing. So it's just a format. OK, so a short form video in context could just literally be um, a step in the process. That's what we've been talking about for the past few minutes. Right. In terms of where else can you utilize video to be more personable, authentic, um, you know, intimate with your customers and your clients uh, by showing up in the form of video, in addition to whatever you're doing, not in replace of, okay, not instead of, but in addition to, because you don't know how they want to consume that content. And at the same time, the more interaction that you have with them from a video format, right, it builds more no like, and trust. It's literally called the celebrity effect. It's an actual thing, everyone, right? So uh, one other thing that I wanted to transition to is uh, another thing on the infographic from HubSpot that talks about 25% of marketers, this is in the what's new in marketing um, section, okay? 25% of marketers plan to use interviews for the first time this year. It's very compelling to me because in the local business mindset, right, in that ecosystem to where you have, say, like a very fixed geographical target in terms of where your potential customers are, right? That's how you grow your business, by getting to know people, right? Inter an interview effectively is a conversation between two or more people. That's all it is, right? So if they're documenting this, how are you documenting this? Oftentimes in this uh, you know, context, it's going to be either through mainly audio only via a podcast or a video podcast where there's video and there's audio, right? So in, those stan in that standpoint, within that specific type of um, uh, category uh, with interviews, think about that in your stack in terms of marketing. How can that interview piece that you do or that you plan to do, this new channel or this new type of a marketing uh, piece that you're doing, right, strategy, um, how can you still fulfill everything else that's inside of the ecosystem that's working for you, right? Like what you had said earlier, Kevin, a blogger is still going to be a blogger. Awesome, right? How can I utilize this interview in and weave it into what I already know works, where I have a skill set in, right, or into anything else? And I think another reason why um, I would encourage people to, to consider using interviews is because... In addition to finding you and your services and your business online, what it, this does is it allows you personally to showcase yourself and align yourself with your business to where it's more than just that frequently asked question, more than just the 30 second TikTok that you did or that 60 second uh, YouTube short that you did um, explaining your service. Because a plumber is a plumber in the context of I do this, right? Whether it's fixing a clogged or a leaky pipe, right? Well, why you as opposed to the other hundred that are in my town? Interview should be able to give you more, give you a, uh, um, a spotlight as to why you're in this business. It's more than just doing that, right? It's a means to an end for you and your family. But what got you into the business? Why do you enjoy it so much? Why do you choose to wake up every day and continue to do that? Is this something that you want to pass on? Is this something that fell in your lap? What are the reasons that, that, that make you stand out and make you potentially connect with the person on the other side that needs your help? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
it's um it's a great way i think the thing too is like with short form video you know no matter who you are no matter how comfortable you are with it a lot of times you're still just spitting you know like it it seems a little salesy uh you know if you're doing hormozy style videos that kind of stuff um no matter what you do you have to kind of be up front you got to hit them with a like a hook at the beginning a quick explanation and a call to action in long form video you're more authentic but anybody who kind of you know because you just have to be after 10 15 minutes like no matter who you are if you're in a conversation you turn into you yep. and anybody who who like shows up to that interview very quickly can figure out oh this guy knows what they're talking about like it takes you 15 seconds to understand if somebody knows what they're talking about because it's the authority in their voice the way that they're speaking the way they carry themselves and then really quickly you know they can make that decision like is this somebody that I should look into a little bit more and kind of going back to the, you know, the post sale check-in, one thing that we're having success with is, you know, after somebody's onboarded and after we give them like an initial kind of sales manual or education, how to use this product that you just bought, how to make sure you get the most out of it. What I'm doing right now is doing basically bi-weekly emails to people. And when they get a bi-weekly email, we're essentially reselling the same things that we sold them originally. You know, like if we're with Go High Level, you know, they would say maybe if, if I sell them a website through Go High Level, they know that it's a good website. They know that it looks good. They know that it's hosted, but maybe they forgot the fact that it's on like Google Cloud hosting and it's a secured network. Uh, and because we do it this way, there isn't a bunch of plugins and, and all that kind of stuff, right? So to send them an email at say the six week mark, you know, and just say, hey, just, just a reminder. Uh, the website that you got, this is the benefit versus a WordPress website and just kind of spell it out for them and just show them it. It reaffirms their decision. It lets them know that they're good. And it also gives me a potential to say, hey, and if you want, we also have all of these add-ons. We can get a chat bot. We can do, you know, your social planner. We can do all these other things for you as well, right? So it, it lets them reaffirm their decision, what they've already purchased. And then again, it's, it's the never ending upsell opportunity. But, you know, the the whole thing is retention, right? So a, a strategic check-in that resells the product throughout the process is it, so much more powerful than like, hey, Tom, give me a thousand bucks. Great. I'll call you in nine months. Well, I'm going to ask you for another thousand bucks, you know? <laughs> like It solves the what have you done for me lately complex too, right? Mm, go in on that. Yeah. So, I mean, oftentimes, especially with uh, marketing uh, consultants, digital marketers, agency owners, more than anything, I'm sure if you haven't already, you will experience that. Right. And what I mean by that is if you're not overly communicating with your clients, especially early on, knowing, notifying them about what you're doing, oftentimes you have a misconception that the more I bother them or communicate with them, the less that uh, they think I either know what I'm doing or I paid you for the job, just get the job done type of mentality. Right. Like you got to make sure that you understand if someone, if a business owner, especially a small business owner is trusting you and investing in you to provide this service and this outcome, make sure that every single time that bill comes up or a few days before that bill comes up, they see this, right? Because your invoice is typically monthly. So you mm -hmm. want to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that you are over delivering in terms of over communicating on the fact that, hey, this month, yeah, this investment, this cost to them, right, is actually worth it. And these are the reasons why it's worth it without them ever having to think that because they, they're going to think that no matter what. No matter so make what. sure that you're showcasing to them. These are the things that we've done for you. And I don't mean overthink that and only do that. Again, the crux of today's conversation and today's episode is around how to automate this user experience to make sure that you're curating the right type of user experience, right? Yeah. To even go ahead on that, though, uh, what I found over the years is, say, like a part of a digital marketing agency is you're going to send somebody their monthly client report. But you can also just pick up your phone, do like a 30 second video and just be like, you know, hey, Jim, so this month what we had is, you know, 35 leads came in. Uh, the number one campaign that's working is this one and it's based on these certain keywords moving forward. I think we should do this. If you got any issues, any questions and you want to hit me up, you always know how to get a hold of me. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to keep our nose to the grindstone doing exactly what it takes for us to deliver exactly what you're looking for. Right there, you've saved yourself a 30-minute phone call, uh, a lot of back and forth. And again, it's just that preemptive strike. If they are on the fence about something, 
you're in their face, you're showing that you care about them. It doesn't always have to be automated. Video is is awesome. And and even something that we hadn't talked about, and I know this is a kind of a big pivot. One thing that that I'm doing with a larger client is we're using video touch-ins for clients on social. You know, like it doesn't make sense that they're seeing the same lead gen ads that other people are right? Like there's benefits. They see it and, and they'll say in the comments, like, yeah, we had this. It's it's amazing. But at the same time, what I'm doing now is I'm taking them out of that audience and I'm reselling them with the value ads, all the reasons that they purchased. I'm showing them all of the good stuff because you can do that for like two bucks a day. You know, like it costs you next to nothing. And you just have like, if you have a three month sales cycle on a certain product, you know, basically put them into like an audience, a new audience every two weeks. For this two weeks, you're going to see this. After you've seen it twice, I'm going to stop showing it to you. You know, then you're going to watch this. After you've watched the full video, I'm going to stop showing it to you. Right. And it's just another way because, you know, like you said before, it's like the omnipresence. You're on multiple channels. You have to just stay in front of them. And if nothing else, it like, that's a show piece. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you, I know what I'm doing. And you sitting there and like the amount of people that kind of come back with like positive responses to that kind of stuff, you know, like if you know where your customers are, hit them with that information at all times, because yeah, yeah you know, they're not opening your emails. And I think another thing too, like that's another way for you to be able to do this, like business networking uh, digitally and leverage yourself because for a local business that maybe isn't as sophisticated as that, right? Meaning mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what you said that I want to basically be able to now deconstruct and simplify for a local business that maybe doesn't have the time, the assets, or just the skill set to deploy that, right? And what I mean by that, guys, is Kevin had said, if you have a three-month sales cycle, right, and you want to make sure that you're reminding um, your customers of the action that they bought and just, you know, reaffirming to them that, hey, you made the right choice, right? Think about it from the standpoint of, okay, if you are a local business that maybe has a transaction that only happens like very, very infrequently every, say, five to seven years as like a realtor does, especially in this market. It might be even less than that right now, right? So what can you do to stay top of mind as opposed to always saying, buy my stuff, right? Utilize your frequently asked questions, your value adds uh, to stay top of mind to these people and have that cycle around because you're not going to have to always think about every two weeks, I got to come up with something else. No, you don't. Because these are the things that always are always coming up in your marketplace. Think about it in terms of as a commercial for your business that as we grew up, Kev, right, on TV, that would always show up. It's the same commercial every single time, right? Even now when, say, my kids will watch um, a something on, t on, on TV. Very rare, but let's say they're watching Hulu. We don't pay for the non-ads version, so they're going to see the same ad over and over and over again to where that jingle gets stuck in their head, right? Um, think about it from the standpoint of you're showing up and you're presenting value to them. It doesn't always have to be the same commercial, but it could be a different frequently asked question. It could be a different testimonial. It could be something different to where, hey, just a reminder, I'm thinking of you. This is the stuff that we do. Here's how I help so-and-so or someone else talking about your business and their experience with your business as well. Because that, again, could be a dollar a day. It doesn't even have to be $2 a day, but you're going to get to know everyone in your marketplace that could be a potential um, customer for you sooner or later. This is about the buying journey, right? Just be be there when they need you, right? And to take it a step farther with that same idea, yeah, you're absolutely right. But when, they, when they're on a call with me, mm. they know me, and then they see my ad, they're like, yo, I know that guy. Mm. You know, like there's just like that, that inbound and it shows like a sophistication in your techniques and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then again, they're, they're swiping so much. They're going to stop when they see somebody they know. It's the same thing. Like people aren't making content on social media anymore. You have influencers, you have businesses, but like the average person is not uploading anything. So like literally you're on TikTok for hours a day and you don't see anybody, you know, right. Whether you're on, and not you particularly, just mm -hmm. generally people spend a, a egregious amount of time on their phones on social networks and they're watching a ton of people they don't know. Mm -hmm. So when they do see somebody that they know and they did have a good experience, you know, like what's the percentage of them that are leaving you a, a real positive comment on the post or sharing it with their friend? Like that's a huge part. Hey, this is the guy that I got my video automations from. It was amazing. You should check that out too. It's powerful. Yeah. And I think like the more you leverage this, this is this in the context of video into your business, um, 
it's probably, if not the, one of the most uh, highly leveraged um, skill sets and activities that you can do in your business because of all the things that it does for your, your business, right? Um, and on the sales side, customer retention side, in terms of just your, your process of appointment reminders, um, all the things, right? Custom, properly customer onboarding, all the things that we talked about today, right? And in terms of what do you do first, right? Because that could be another question that uh, some people may have as they're watching uh, this episode. Um, I have, since the rise of short form video, I have uh, really, what I've really understood, right, is whenever I was in, like pre-pandemic, whenever I was in a video shoot with someone uh, in terms of like setting the stage, we always talked about, hey, this is the outline of the questions that we're going to do. Here's how the show, this is how the the day in terms of the shoot is going to run, roll, right? Um, but there's going to be a time to where you're still warming up. This isn't something that you do, right? You're not accustomed to talking to a camera lens with lights on you and sometimes even with makeup on you, right? And being mic'd up and having all the things that happen, right? So how do you condense the time frames and get them to be in flow state and comfortable as fast as possible? Right. So as I set these expectations up for them and I encourage it's the same process, regardless if you have a production team behind you or you're doing this at home, there, there's going to be this warm up stage, just like in sports. Right. There's a warm up phase before you, it's game time. So as you get accustomed to warming up and doing these things, you're going to fumble around with your words. You're going to get nervous. You're going to lose track of stuff. And you're to the point of where after you get into flow state, as you get into flow state, all that stuff's not going to matter anymore. You're going to be comfortable. You're going to be basically into a place to where it's almost like you're having a conversation with a potential customer or client on the other side. But I say all that to say this, right? As you practice and get more reps in short form video, right? Literally what Kevin said, cut the fluff, right? Rephrase the question, answer the question, done. Get in and get out. Just do that enough times, get those reps in, right? What's going to happen is you're going to develop this muscle, right? Your short form content will then lead to long form content because you're practicing a different communication channel. You're practicing um, your skills. And in, if you're able to be concise, once you then graduate into longer form video, the way that you're communicating and the practice you had in terms of com your communication skills is going to translate to that, right? So I would highly encourage you practice short form. It's free, y'all. It's literally free. Hit record, hit publish, right? And you do that enough times, you're going to get better. Just like how our podcast, we already know where we're headed, right? Even though, right, it's it, like we know that we have to suck before we're good. And that's why we continue down that journey, right? Exactly, exactly. And I'm just going to finish this off with one other sentiment. Um, essentially, I hope we've conveyed it effectively today the power that short form video can be after the sale in terms of onboarding, customer training, education, uh, your monthly check-ins, and like ultimately all things that drive customer retention and follow-up sales and, and upsells. Um, we don't normally sell on this podcast at all, but if you are looking for somebody, if this sounds like a great idea, but you don't know how to do it, hit up Tom. This is what he does. He is awesome at this. Sorry to put you on the spot here, but this is what he does. He's awesome at it. Look at his setup compared to mine. He's better than me at this. Uh, and you can get your automation sorted out. Um, it can be transform transformative in a business and it can literally like it, it can literally double your client base just because you're reselling the same people again and again instead of getting them lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Ultimately, it takes you maybe two hours uh, and you can set up automations that'll last for you know six months to a year. So just be strategic with it. Have a plan. Have it thought out. That's the way to succeed in business in 2023, 2024. It's not going to be less video out there. Um, take advantage of the tools that you have. Uh, but for that, uh, that's episode number seven of the WTF podcast. Tom, it is always a pleasure. Uh, I learned a lot today, and that's why I keep showing up every week. I hope you got value in it too. And anybody who's watching, uh, if you have questions, comments, or I hope there's no concerns, but you can let us know in the comments or by hitting up Tom at TNT Digital Marketing or me at adronin.com, ad-ronin.com. See you next week, Tom. And we're out, brother. Cool. Cool.